Hi, this is Gali Goldfarb and welcome to my Gorilla Life Coaching videos. Five times a week, I talk about a quote that can help you move your life to a better, healthier and happier place for you and I hope you gain a lot of value from these videos. So how are you doing today? I hope you're feeling good and calm because today our quote of the day is, Nonviolence is a powerful and just weapon which cuts without wounding and ennobles the man who wields to it by Martin Luther King Jr. There are other ways to get what we desire aside from harming other people in the process. We all have dreams, we all have desires, and we all have wishes. And we can achieve our desires, wishes, and dreams. But we must make sure that when we are going after something that is very important to us, that we go after it without being violent in any way towards other people. Of course, you, can, you can't get what you desire by yielding to other people's desires and force when they are harmful or hurtful towards you. But you will also never win a cause and reach your dreams and keep them in the long term if you use force against other people. The, the win will only be temporary in that case, but the harm will leave behind that we leave behind will become permanent. Violence cannot bring about permanent good. There will be people on the way who will try to hurt you or harm you just because of jealousy. They may be miserly and not want other people to have good fortune. Such people may, may even act in ways that are violent, preventing you from getting what you desire and deserve, but nevertheless, never retort to violence with violence. You cannot win in the long run in this way. Although you must refuse degradation of any sort from people who see things differently from you, you should never resort to violence. In, in the small claims courts, there are many cases between neighbors that become very violent. One side causes damage to property or to rights or, pro or the privacy of, others, of the other side. When these cases escalate, there is a lot of violence between neighbors that live right next to one another. And this can lead to a lot of suffering and frustration and a lot of unhappiness for both sides. There will be people who will want to do you harm for no reason, but you must deal with such people and not let them have their way, but ensuring that this is done in a non-violent way. You should never yield to what you know to be right, but also never physically cause damage to the other person or the other side. Be consistent, but in a respectful and genuine and restrained way. Do not violently confront and do not allow any ill will or hatred into your actions towards another. You have no time to waste on hatred because when you hate, you bring hatred onto yourself. And when you, you cause suffering to others, you bring it on yourself as well. And when you weaken others, you also weaken yourself. A nonviolent way of fighting for what you may be deserving of takes much more courage and depth of commitment than behaving in a violent and shaming way towards another group of people or a person. Choose love instead of hate and resist any violence, both to spirit as well as to the body. All violence and shaming will cause others to hate you and harm you back. Even if they started the battle, the battle will only escalate when you add more sticks to the fire. Be open about your resistance to any of uh, any misjudge, misjustice that you see, but in a disciplined way. Violence is used to scare someone or to threaten someone, and violence comes from fear. And we all have control over how we view any situation. And we, when we learn personal development, as you are doing with these coaching videos, and as you improve your life while learning your weaknesses, then you can understand what it is that you're really fearing that could happen. And then remove your fear and behave in a more rational way to ensure that justice does happen. When we get obsessed with the fear, it grows and becomes something very hard to control, something big. And uh, it's hard for us to deal with it without acting irrationally or violently towards the person leading this cause. So how can we fight a war in a non in a nonviolent moral way against people who are causing us injustice or harm? Well, as I mentioned, first of all, you want to do personal development. This is very, this is really key. You have to understand your fears. Are they real? Can they really happen? What if they do happen? 
And is this important? And is it major? Will this really cause you disruption, harm, or injustice in the, in the future, in the long run? If you answered yes, then the next step is to ask what can be done. When you understand that you are really angry with the disturbance itself and not the people behind the disturbance, then you can find a better solution. When you are angry with the people, you will only cause yourself more harm since you are taking things personally. When you stop taking things personally, then the anger towards the people will dissipate and there will perhaps be anger only about the injustice, but not towards the people. In effect, all the people that do bad, are the evildoers, are also victims and are, they are not evil people at their core because no one is evil at their core. So you want to defeat the injustice, but not the people behind it. Now, to be clear, nonviolence does not mean that you have to be uh, passive, but you have to be rather proactive and intervening. It means that you're, you are taking care of, of this injustice, but in a way that goes through empathy and understanding, but still fighting for your rights and your side. It means doing things that are right to do, but in a non-violent way, and then waiting to see what happens, and then taking the next steps and waiting again. Violence definitely may end things much more quickly, but it doesn't end things well. Think about Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Now, status is always on the line, and violence, aggression, and even yelling and arguing do not solve any problems. Patience is key. Think about how Mahatma Gandhi, Mother Teresa, Martin Luther King Jr., the Dalai Lama, and Nelson Mandela all achieved great feats through nonviolence. Very little gets accomplished with war and violence. In fact, aggression and reasoning are located in two different parts of the brain. Violence makes the part of the brain of aggression kick into work, while negotiation makes the part of the brain responsible for reasoning kick into action. You must consciously stop the aggressive side of the brain uh, to allow in reasoning when you are in a dispute with someone. That is the only way to stop violent dispute. And always know that even if you do win with aggression and violence, this will harm any relationship in the long term. Nonviolence brings redemption and reconciliation and love between people and friendship. The, all in the long term. Even in business, you never know when things will come around and you can get a second chance. Now, if you react with violence the first time around, you may lose the second chance that you desire. Life is like a circle. Sometimes the power is in your hands and sometimes it is in the other person's hands. And when you win through violence, your behavior will be remembered. And if you lose the upper hand, you may have a serious setback in the future. Just think about Steve Jobs and how he sold his company, Pixar, the animation company, uh, to Disney after years when Jobs, when Steve Jobs did not get along with the CEO of Disney. But Jobs was smart enough never to publicly say anything bad about Disney during those years. And when the CEO that was less in tune with Jobs uh, left Disney, then the sale of Pixar could be completed to the benefit of all sides. It is good to remember that not every dispute is existential, meaning not every dispute will kill you. Empathy can win you what violence can never win you. It's a win-lose solution when you go with violence. Everyone loses. And when you go with a win-win solution, then everyone wins in the long term. Understanding and patience are needed to win through nonviolence. Nothing needs to be solved immediately. So understanding and patience almost every time can help you win any dispute. Listen and relate and respond through nonviolent tactics. Sending out information to people who may not be aware of what is happening, showing up to talk and negotiate better situations and better conclusions with the other side, using art or music to state your side, stopping social contact uh, to a loss of one side can also work. In national issues, refusal to pay, pay certain taxes and divestment can also work. Cooperation with other people who share your views is also very crucial. Overall, you want to open your heart and act from a place that is loving rather than a place of hatred. 
you can get what you deserve and prevent any injustice from occurring and continuing to happen, also through love. Even in hostage attacks, the police have changed their methods of action from counterattack immediately through violence to talking and negotiating in nonviolent ways to resolve the problem. And as a result, non, not only are there less people killed, but more people come out with happier results. When you believe that the universe is always on the side of justice, then you will know that justice will eventually win. So fight for justice in a loving and moral way. So as I always do with these videos, I will provide you with a few questions that you want to ask yourself so that the answers will help move your life to a better place for you. And the questions of the day are, which small wars am I wasting my time on? Which important issues can I find win-win solutions to my problems? What are my needs and the needs of the other side? And why do they have these needs? And what could be provided instead in order to settle the dispute in a way that both people are happy? Look at any dispute with external eyes, not from personal eyes, and you will be able to find a non-violent solution to all issues. Now I recommend writing down these questions and your answers in a notebook, especially prepared for these coaching sessions, so that you can look over them, introspect over them, think about them, and come to your conclusions. To finish this video off, the affirmation of the day is, I strive to understand and respect other people and take the time to appreciate people who provide me with challenges because I know that they are providing me with opportunities to grow and heal. I strive to understand and respect other people and take the time to appreciate people who provide me with challenges because I know that they are providing me with opportunities to grow and heal. Now tell this affirmation to yourself many times in order to make sure that it enters your subconscious mind and allows you to make deep transformation within you. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Please also subscribe to my channel and ring the notifications button to get notified every time I upload a new video. And please also visit my website, The Gorilla Diet, to help you move your health and wellness to a better place for you. Thank you very much for joining.